while negotiations were happening between Finland and the Soviet Union, the possibility of war. For this week, the Soviet Union invades Finland. During the harsh winter of 1939, Soviet soldiers faced a chilling ordeal in the forests of Finland. In the midst of the Winter War, they encountered a terrifying phenomenon that claimed numerous lives. Despite their efforts, the soldiers were unable to comprehend or combat the mysterious threat lurking in the darkness. With the break of dawn, they emerged shaken and traumatized, haunted by the events of that fateful night. Join us as we explore this unsettling event and attempt to uncover its secret. The Snow Wars, the David and Goliath story. Long ago, during the last days of 1939, a big fight called the Winter War started. It was between two countries, the big Soviet Union and the much smaller Finland. Even though Finland didn't have as many people or guns, they were very strong in spirit. They didn't want to give up, even when things looked bad. This fight wasn't just about who got what land, it was also about different ideas and the strong wills of two groups of people, all happening during the freezing Finnish winter. After World War I and a big fight in Russia called the Civil War, Finland became its own country. But the leader of the Soviet Union, a man named Joseph Stalin, wanted to take some land back, especially a place called the Karelian Isthmus, which was very close to a big Soviet city, Leningrad. He thought this would help keep his country safe if there were another big war. Finland didn't want to give up its land, though, and the leaders said no to Stalin's demands. The fight began on November 30th, 1939, after a small bombing near a place called Manila. The Soviet Union said Finland did it and used this as an excuse to start invading. Most of the world didn't think this was fair and didn't like what the Soviet Union was doing. But Finland had to face the huge Soviet army mostly by itself. The Soviets had a lot more soldiers, over 500,000, while Finland had a lot fewer. Even with fewer people and less stuff, the Finnish soldiers, led by a man named General Mannerheim, fought very hard. They knew the land well and used sneaky moves and clever plans to fight against the bigger Soviet army. They had special places to hide and fight from, called the Mannerheim Line, which showed everyone how tough they were. The very cold winter helped Finland too. It got super cold, like minus 40 degrees, which made it really hard for the Soviet soldiers. They were not ready for such cold weather or for the tricky forests and wetlands in Finland. They usually fought in big groups in open spaces, which didn't work well in Finland's tough land. Also, the Soviet Union had lost a lot of its smart military leaders before the war, so their army wasn't as strong as it could be. This made it even harder for them to fight in Finland. The Winter War caught the eyes of people all around the world. Lots of countries felt bad for Finland and wanted to help. Even though countries like France, the United Kingdom, and the United States couldn't send a lot of stuff, they did send some things, like guns and bullets, which really helped. It was like getting a little help from friends when you really need it. Plus, brave folks from places like Scandinavia, that's up north in Europe, and other parts far away decided to actually go to Finland and help fight. They saw that Finland was in trouble and wanted to do something good. But the biggest help Finland got was the weapons and bullets from other countries, which were super important for fighting. After lots of fighting and tough times, the big battle ended on March 12, 1940, when a peace deal called the Moscow Peace Treaty was signed. It was a sad day for Finland because they had to give up more than 10% of their land to the Soviet Union. This included some really important places like the Karelian Isthmus, which was a big piece of land near the sea, and parts of other areas like Sala and Petsamo. Even though Finland lost some of its land, it was still its own country, not controlled by the Soviet Union. That was a big deal because it showed that even a small country could stand up to a big one. The Winter War is remembered for many reasons. It changed how Finland and the Soviet Union thought about fighting and about themselves. For Finland, this war brought everyone together. They had a special word, Sisu, which means being really, really brave and not giving up, no matter how hard things get. This war made that word mean even more. 
it showed that fins could face really big problems and not break. On the other side, the Soviet Union learned that its army had a lot of problems. The soldiers weren't ready for the cold, and they didn't know how to fight in Finland's tricky woods and cold weather. Plus, they had lost many of their smart leaders before the war, which made things even harder. Because of this, the Soviet Union decided they needed to make big changes in their army. They wanted to make sure they could do better in future fights, especially with World War II starting around the same time. This war, even though it was short, taught a lot of lessons and changed how countries thought about fighting and helping each other. Enter the Dark Forest, where a Soviet group met a horror so deep it would be remembered forever in history. The Silent Enemy, the Dark Frightening Woods. One really scary night back in 1939, something very bad happened in the quiet woods of Finland. This story is about a big group of soldiers from the Soviet Union, which was a really powerful country. They were near Finland's border, part of a huge army trying to take over Finland in the Winter War. This night was so scary and strange that people still talk about it, trying to figure out what happened. This Soviet group, called a division, was really big and part of the bigger army fighting against Finland. They walked into Finland feeling strong and ready, thinking they would easily win. They were supposed to take over important spots and beat the Finnish soldiers. But they didn't expect the Finnish winter and the dark, thick woods to be so tough. It was like the cold, and the trees were fighting against them too. On this particular night, the soldiers set up their tents in the woods, thinking they were safe because there were so many of them. They were already having a hard time with the freezing cold and not having enough food and warm clothes. But they didn't know that something much worse than cold was coming. At first, the officers thought their soldiers were just scared for no reason. But then, something really frightening started happening. Stories from those who saw what happened, though they're all mixed up and hard to believe, say that out of nowhere, something attacked them. This wasn't like any enemy they knew how to fight. This thing, whatever it was, moved too fast and was too fierce. People said it was like the shadows in the forest came alive. There were terrible screams, and it felt like the anger of the cold, dark woods had come out to get them. The Soviet soldiers, who were trained to fight other soldiers, didn't know what to do. They tried to fight back, but it was useless. They couldn't see who or what was attacking them. It was too dark, and the woods were too thick. They were scared and confused, and their usual ways of fighting didn't work at all. When the sun came up, it showed how awful the night had been. The place where they had camped was destroyed. Tents were ripped up, and all their stuff was thrown all over, covered in blood. The soldiers were all over the place, too. Some were hurt really badly, and others looked untouched but were still dead. No one could tell exactly what had happened. It was a mystery, with so many soldiers gone in such a strange and sad way. This night became a famous story, because it was so unusual and scary, a reminder of how tough and mysterious the war in Finland was. Right after the scary night, everyone thought maybe the Finnish soldiers had attacked the Soviet group using sneaky fighting tricks. But this idea didn't make sense for long. The hurts on the Soviet soldiers were strange, not like what you'd see if there was a normal fight. They didn't have the kind of wounds you get when you defend yourself. Also, there wasn't any clear sign that a big group of attackers had been there. This made the people trying to figure out what happened very confused. People started guessing all kinds of things. Some even thought maybe there were ghostly spirits or strange beasts from Finnish stories out in those woods. These are old tales about scary things living in the forest. Then, there were others who thought maybe the Finnish people did something to make the Soviet soldiers very scared on purpose. But there was no real proof for any of these guesses. And with so many soldiers gone in such a scary way, nobody could really say for sure what happened. The Soviet army tried to find out more by asking questions and looking into it, but they ran into problems. One big issue was that the soldiers who were there and still alive were too scared to talk much. What they had gone through was so bad 
that they couldn't put it into words properly. The Finnish people said they had nothing to do with it. They thought maybe the Soviet soldiers got too scared because they were in a strange place and because it was so cold and hard out there. This could make a little sense because the Winter War was really tough, especially because of the weather and being scared of hidden enemies. But even this didn't explain everything about why so many were hurt or why it looked like there had been a big fight. This strange event where so many Soviet soldiers were hurt in the Finnish woods is still a big mystery from the Winter War in 1939. There are not many clear stories or records about that night. Most of what we know comes from bits and pieces from people who were there and from some papers the Soviet military had. In this chapter, we try to put these little bits together. We look at what the few people who saw what happened say and what the official papers might tell us, trying to shine some light on a very dark and confusing event. In the quiet after, survivors talk about things too scary to understand. What secrets are hidden in the quiet cold? Ghostly nights, the Russians' terrifying threat. A few people who were there and made it out alive talked about how that night was really scary in a way they couldn't explain. They all said different things, but they all were really confused and scared, and it seemed like they were all dealing with something they couldn't see. They talked about hearing weird sounds when it was dark, like soft talking coming from all around, and sudden loud screams that made the cold night even scarier. One person said the air felt so thick it was hard to breathe or even move around because they were so scared. Another person said they saw weird shapes moving just outside the light from their campfire. These shapes moved too smoothly and quickly to be people, but they didn't move like normal shadows or like leaves blowing in the wind either. Everyone who talked about that night said they felt a really deep kind of fear, like there was something there making everything feel tight and heavy. The Russian army's records about what happened are very short and don't say much, because it seems like they didn't want people to find out anything that could make the soldiers feel bad or show that the army did something wrong. The few things we can learn from the records say that they checked everything out quickly and in a big way, but they didn't share what they found out, or sometimes that information just isn't there for us to see. The records just touch on where the group was sent and what they were supposed to do, then all of a sudden, there's nothing more from them. What comes after just talks around what happened, mentioning a big loss and something unexpected, but doesn't really go into it. They don't say anything about fighting with the enemy, which makes sense because there's no real proof that there was a battle with the Finnish army. Because the stories from people who were there don't match up with the few things in the records, lots of people have started guessing about what might have really happened. Some think that the Russian army was trying to hide that they ran into something really strange that they couldn't handle. Maybe because they didn't want anyone to think their army could be beaten. Others think maybe the stories don't line up because war is messy, and sometimes things happen that are so strange, people just want to forget or move on from them instead of trying to explain them. The fact that this scary event didn't get much attention or wasn't talked about much in the Russian army's history books has made some people think that it was a really embarrassing moment for them. They believe it was a big mistake that the Russian army didn't want to look into or talk about. It's important to think about how much control the government had over what people would know or say. Back then, especially when Stalin was in charge, Russia was really strict about controlling news and stories to make sure everyone thought the army was super strong and couldn't make mistakes. It's likely that any information or stories that didn't match what the government wanted people to believe were hidden away or changed. This control over the news probably affected the people who survived that scary event too. They might have been scared into keeping quiet or changing their stories to fit what the leaders wanted everyone to believe. The fear of getting in trouble, along with how upsetting and traumatic the event was, could have made many people decide not to share what they really knew or to only talk about it in a way that wouldn't cause more problems. After the terrible event where a whole group of Russian soldiers was destroyed in the thick woods of Finland during a very cold war, lots of different ideas have popped up trying to explain something that doesn't seem to make sense. 
There are many different ideas, from ones that sound reasonable to ones that are more like wild guesses or fantasy stories. Each idea tries to answer the big question that's been left hanging since that scary night. What kind of force could wipe out a whole group of soldiers in such a strange and mysterious way? One simple idea that some people have is that the group of soldiers was attacked by wolves or other wild animals. This happened in Finland, where the winters are very, very cold. Because it was so cold, animals might have been really hungry and desperate for food, which could have made them attack the soldiers. People who believe this idea say that the way the soldiers' bodies were hurt looks like what happens when animals attack. But some people don't think this is true. They say the soldiers had lots of weapons and knew how to fight. So it doesn't make sense that animals could hurt them so badly without any signs of the soldiers fighting back. Another idea is that the really bad weather could have caused big problems for the soldiers. When it gets super cold, people can start to feel very confused, see things that aren't there, and even start to act in ways that don't make sense. They might have started to panic because they were so cold and confused, which could have made everyone scared and act crazy. This might have led to the soldiers accidentally hurting each other or themselves without even realizing it. This kind of thing, where everyone starts to panic and things get out of hand, is called mass hysteria. These two ideas try to explain what happened without making it sound too mysterious. They look at things like the weather and animals, which can be dangerous but are normal parts of nature. But not everyone agrees with these ideas. They think that there has to be more to the story because of how bad the situation was for the soldiers. Plus, if the cold or animals were the reasons, some people wonder why there weren't clearer signs, like tracks in the snow or signs of the soldiers fighting back. Go deeper into the cold mystery, where guesses and old tales mix to create this scary puzzle. The coldest war, the soldiers have fallen. The Winter War was a tough time for the Soviet soldiers mainly because of the freezing cold. But the damages they suffered and the total destruction found indicate that there might be another reason, not just the harsh weather behind their tragic end. One thought is that the Finnish army might have secretly attacked the Soviets. The theory is that the Finnish fighters, who were really good at surprise fighting and knew the area like the back of their hand, might have ambushed the Soviet soldiers unexpectedly. They could have used tricks like making weird noises or using local scary legends to frighten the Soviet troops. This would have caused total chaos and fear among them. Although this idea sounds possible, there isn't any strong proof to back it up. Also, when we look into Finnish military records from that time, there's nothing that says such an attack ever took place. Then there's a more unusual theory that involves creatures from old Finnish tales. According to some stories, there are spirits and magical beings that live in the forests. Some people believe that the Soviet soldiers might have come across these supernatural beings. Even though this idea captures the imagination, it doesn't have any real evidence to support it, and most experts in history don't take it seriously. But it does show how people sometimes turn to mythical stories when they can't find logical answers. Another explanation looks at the mental state of the soldiers. It's thought that they were under a huge amount of stress and fear, being all alone and far from home. They might have been scared by rumors of Finnish magical attacks and become overly anxious. This severe fear might have led to a terrible situation where they couldn't tell friend from foe and started attacking each other in a state of panic and confusion. There's also a possibility that some kind of poison played a role whether it came accidentally from the Soviets' own supplies or was a purposeful attack by the Finns. The idea here is that being exposed to some harmful chemical could have confused the soldiers and caused their downfall. However, just like with the other theories, there's no actual evidence that any chemical weapons were used during the Winter War, so this possibility is also doubtful. Apart from these theories, we can think about the soldiers' readiness and how well they were prepared for the fight. Maybe they weren't trained enough for the severe cold and the type of fighting they faced. Their clothing might not have been warm enough, 
and they may not have known how to move or fight effectively in the snowy, forested terrain, making them easy targets. The communication between the soldiers and their leaders might have been another big problem. If the soldiers didn't know what was happening or what they were supposed to do, confusion and fear could easily take over. This lack of clear orders and understanding could lead to mistakes, accidents, and even panic. In the long history of military events, there are many stories that leave people scratching their heads, just like the mystery of the Soviet soldiers in Finland. These strange happenings from different times and places all have something in common. They are full of questions and puzzles, making us wonder exactly what occurred and why. Let's explore a few more examples that are just as spooky and hard to explain as the fate of the Soviet division. One of the biggest unsolved mysteries from Soviet times is the Dyatlov Pass incident. This story is about nine hikers who went on a trip in the northern Ural Mountains and never came back alive. Their ending was very strange, similar to the Soviet soldiers in Finland, because they were found dead in ways that didn't make sense. The injuries on their bodies ranged from small cuts to very serious ones, but no one could figure out exactly what happened to them. People have guessed all sorts of things, from natural disasters like avalanches to very strange ideas like secret military experiments and even aliens. Since no one knows for sure what happened, the Dyatlov Pass story has remained a topic that people are very interested in and talk about a lot. Another mysterious event happened at the beginning of World War II in Los Angeles. One night, the people of the city were suddenly woken up by loud sirens and the noise of guns shooting at the sky. They thought it was an attack by enemies, but there were no enemy planes seen. This strange night is known as the Battle of Los Angeles. Just like with the mysterious event in the Finnish woods, this incident happened quickly and left everyone confused. People have tried to explain it in many ways, from thinking it was just a big mistake because everyone was very nervous about the war, to more wild ideas like spaceships from other planets. Looking at other unsolved mysteries in history, see how the strange event in the Finnish woods fits into these unknown stories. The troops vanishing without a trace. The Bermuda Triangle is a famous area in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean. This place is well known because many ships and airplanes have disappeared there without any explanation. One of the most famous stories is about Flight 19. This was a group of five U.S. Navy bombers. They were on a practice flight in 1945 when they suddenly disappeared. They couldn't be found anywhere, and even a plane that went out to look for them also vanished. People started talking about the Bermuda Triangle having special, maybe even magic-like powers because of this. The story of Flight 19 is not about a terrible tragedy where lots of people are harmed, but it is a mystery. It's about how sometimes we cannot understand or explain everything, especially when faced with the unknown. Back in World War I, there were also strange stories. One such story came from the Battle of Mons, where British soldiers were fighting. People said that angels appeared in the sky above the soldiers during the battle. These angels were thought to protect them from the enemy, who were the German soldiers. Later, people thought these stories might have been made up or imagined. They thought the soldiers were very stressed or remembered old stories from their culture or religion. This story, like the one about the Bermuda Triangle, mixes war, mystery, and things that seem beyond our normal world. It's another example of how, when faced with really tough or strange situations, people might start to believe in or think they see things that are beyond the normal. These stories tell us about how people try to find explanations or comfort in situations that are hard to understand. The Ghost Army was a special group during World War II. They weren't like other soldiers because they didn't fight the usual way with guns and bombs. Instead, they used tricks to make the enemy, which was the German army, think they were somewhere they weren't. They had fake tanks, which were really just big balloons, and played sounds of pretend armies to trick the Germans. This is called psychological warfare, which means using tricks and lies to make the enemy scared or confused. 
This idea of tricking the enemy is old and has been used in many wars, not just with the ghost army. It's about playing with the enemy's mind and feelings to make them give up or make mistakes without having to fight them directly. It's like playing a scary prank on someone to make them think there's a ghost, so they run away even when there's nothing there. For example, during a very cold war called the Winter War, the Finnish soldiers used the snowy and spooky forests to their advantage against the Soviet army. The Soviet soldiers were not used to the scary, quiet forests in Finland. They were far from home and already scared. The Finnish soldiers used this fear. They would make strange noises or use the shadows and sounds of the forest to make the Soviet soldiers even more scared. This wasn't just fighting with weapons, it was fighting with fear and mind games. Psychological warfare, like what the Ghost Army did or what the Finns did in the forest, is about finding what scares the enemy or makes them unsure. It's about using those fears or doubts to beat them without a traditional fight. It's like how in some stories, heroes don't always fight monsters with swords or strength. Sometimes they use clever tricks or find the monster's weak spot. In real wars, these tricks and mind games can save lives by ending fights without real fighting. When soldiers go to war, they face the very real risk of dying every day. This is super scary. So many of them start to believe in lucky charms or special rituals to feel safer or to think they have some control over what happens to them. The soldiers from the Soviet Union were no different. They came from many different places all over the huge country and each place had its own stories and beliefs. So imagine all these soldiers, each with their own set of fears and hopes, coming together. Now when these Soviet soldiers went to fight in Finland, they entered a world that was new and strange to them. Finland has a lot of old stories about spirits and mythical creatures that live in the forests. These stories were normal for Finns, but were strange and scary for the Soviet soldiers. The forests in Finland were not just trees and animals to these soldiers. They were places where, according to the local stories, magical and spooky creatures lived. The Finnish people knew their own folklore well, and they might have used this to scare the invading soldiers. They could have spread scary stories or even set up things in the woods to make it look like these fairy tale creatures were real. This was a smart move if they did it because it would make the already scared Soviet soldiers even more afraid. The forests in Finland are thick and hard to see through, and they are full of natural sounds that can sound like something else in the dark or when you're scared. If you're already frightened and far from home and you keep hearing weird noises or can't see well, you might start to feel very nervous or even think you're seeing things that aren't there. This feeling gets worse if you're cut off from your friends or can't talk to them easily. For the Soviet soldiers, already far from home and feeling lost, these stories and the spooky forest could have made them feel even more alone and scared. This is what we call psychological warfare. It's when you use tricks and fears to mess with the enemy's mind. In the cold, whispering forests of Finland, it was easy to make the soldiers feel like they were surrounded by ghosts or monsters, even when there wasn't anything there. Long ago, in wars and battles, people found out that they could use tricks and scary stories to mess with their enemies' heads. This is called psychological warfare, and it means using fear and mind games instead of just fighting with weapons. One famous time this happened was in World War II, during something called Operation Quicksilver. The Allies made fake armies out of blow-up tanks and pretend soldiers. They did this to trick the German spies into thinking there were a lot more soldiers ready to fight than there actually were. This trick wasn't about making the enemy scared of ghosts or monsters, but it was still about playing tricks on their minds. Now, let's talk about something that happened during a tough time in Finland. There was a really bad fight where a lot of soldiers got hurt, and no one could really explain what happened. This mysterious event made the soldiers fighting in Finland even more scared and confused. They started to believe more in the scary stories and rumors about the place. These weren't just any stories. They were tales of the spooky and weird forests in Finland 
filled with creatures from old tales that the local people grew up hearing about. The thing is, when soldiers hear these kinds of stories, especially after something really scary and unexplainable like a massacre, it makes everything seem even spookier. They start to believe in these stories more because they're already in a scary and stressful situation. This makes them not fight as well because they're not just fighting the enemy anymore. They're also fighting their own fears and the scary stories in their heads. Was the massacre of the Soviet division in the Finnish forests a result of natural elements, a Finnish trap, or something far more inexplicable? Share your thoughts and theories with us in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more.